So because it usually doesn't make sense for us to, you know, try to talk to everybody to do a census, uh, usually we need to create a sample. And so there's a variety of ways in which we can create a sample. Uh, and so let's talk about those, and let's talk about them through examples. So suppose that we could somehow identify all the likely voters in a state, and we want to, uh, create a sample of all those voters, uh, in order to ask them how they're gonna vote in the next election. So one option would be to write all their names on a piece of paper and toss those in a really, really big hat. Uh, and then, you know, put a bunch of all these little slips of paper, all these names in the hat, and then draw a thousand slips out of the hat. Kind of like a lottery. So this sampling method is called a simple random sample. Simple random sample. Simple random sample means that all options are equally likely to get selected no matter what. Uh, it, it's a equivalent to putting a bunch of names in a hat. Now, of course, people don't actually use large hats. Uh, instead, they do things like put all the names in a computer and have the computer randomly select names. Uh, and that would be a simple random sample. Now, that's not always practical, though, or sometimes it's not even desired. So, for example, suppose that in a particular state, uh, previous data has suggested that the electorate was approximately 39% Democrats, 37% Republicans, and 24% Independents. And so, in a sample of a thousand people, let's say we're doing a political poll, we want to make sure that we get, get about 390 Democrats, 370 Republicans, and 240 Independents. Now, one option would be to go ahead and do our simple random sample, uh, and just sort of hope that everything works out okay, uh, cause chances are it probably will come out pretty close. But another option would be to, uh, select, randomly select from 390 people known to be Democrats, 370 who are known to be Republicans, and 240 with those no political affiliation. This is assuming that people have somehow indicated their p uh, party affiliation. So this is a method called, this is a method called stratified sampling. The idea behind stratified sampling is that we take our entire population and we divide it into groups. So we divide our entire population into groups, and then we sample, uh, a proportionate to our, our, our desires. And so I'm gonna randomly select, do, 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 do. I'm gonna randomly gonna select 390 of these, of these Democrats, and I'm going to randomly select 370 of these, of these Republicans, and 240 of these Independents. And so we've, divided our population into groups, and then we randomly select from inside of each of those groups. Very similar to this is an idea called quota sampling. So this is called quota sampling. And it works the same way, except instead of starting by dividing the population into groups, we just sort of start randomly sampling people. So we go, okay, I'm gonna grab you and you and you and you and you and you and you. And we keep on going until we meet our quota of 390 Democrats. So let's say I've sampled, you know, 600 people and I've already talked to 390 Democrats. I call up the next person and say, hi, are you a Democrat or Republican? And they say, I'm a Democrat. And I say, I'm sorry, I already have enough Democrats, so I'm not gonna talk to you. And that is the idea of quota sampling. Now suppose a college wanted to give, uh, to survey students, and since students are already divided up into classes, they just randomly select 10 classes and give the survey to all the students in each of those 10 classes. This is a sampling method called cluster sampling. And this is different than the quote, uh, the stratified sampling we saw earlier. Because in stratified sampling, remember we divided the population up into three groups and then randomly selected from inside each group. With cluster sampling, we're dividing our population up into, into groups. In this case, it's, uh, they're divided up into classes. And then, instead of randomly choosing from inside each of these groups, 
we're going to select 10 of those groups and give the survey to all the students in those classes. So we're going to sample everyone from this class and everyone from this class and everyone from this class. So we're randomly selecting pockets, uh, and then sampling everyone inside that pocket. Uh, this is commonly done for things like, um, some, some, uh, some polling where people go door to door because it doesn't make sense to go to one house in one city and another house in another city or another neighborhood. Uh, so they'll choose a neighborhood and visit everyone inside of a neighborhood. So another, uh, option. So suppose to select a sample, a pollster selects every hundredth name in the phone book. So this is a method called systematic sampling. Systematic sampling. And the idea is you take a list and you choose every nth value in the list. In this case, we're taking every hundredth. So for example, if I had a bunch of information here, I could say I'm going to take the first one, skip to, take the next one, skip to, take the next one, skip to, take the next one, and there is my sample. This kind of method, taking every third or every hundredth item, is called systematic sampling. So suppose a pollster is standing on a street, uh, corner and just interviews the first hundred people who happen to walk by and talk to him. This is a sampling method called convenience sampling because they're choosing whoever's convenient. This is bad sampling. There's absolutely no guarantee that the people that are selected are anywhere representative of the population, and convenience sampling like this should be avoided at all costs. Very similar, though, is this situation. A website has a survey asking readers to give their opinions on a tax proposal. What kind of sampling method are they using? This is called a voluntary response sample, uh, and it is in many ways similar or related to the convenience sample because it is a convenient sample. The different, the, the real key here is that the sample is volunteering to be part of the study. What tends to be ha happen is that it's skewed towards people who either have a really strong opinion, uh, on the matter or just have way too much time on their hands and enjoy filling out surveys. So this, again, tends to be a bad method for, uh, choosing a sample.